Hello, big girls. It's June 1st, or it's about to be. So the only place we are drafting is obviously underdog, but drafts are going on. They're hot and heavy. People are paying money to draft against each other, best ball drafts, etc. cetera. And uh, immediately I'm noticing some mind bogglingly bad values in drafts right now. Okay. So there was eight of them that stuck out to me like a sore thumb. And I want to rip through them right now because I don't expect their value to stay here. So you can jump on top of it. Now, if you want to, if you're not on underdog, there it doesn't even matter about drafting now. You're like, ah, you know, we don't know anything from training camp. They're just so fun. They're so addicting. We are having them and organizing them within our Discord weekly. So if you want to jump into the Discord, absolutely free. Go sign up on underdog, underdogfantasy.com. Use the code BDGE and you will get a free 100% deposit match when you get on there and you could draft with us, all right? But when you draft with us, make sure, make sure, make sure that you are not taking Drake London 14th overall. So, yeah, these videos are going to get spicy. Someone's got to say it to you right now. All right. This is what ADP looked like on Underdog two months ago. Drake London, the wide receiver 14, 23rd pick. Love it. The 211, 212, almost fading into the third round. All about that value for Drake London. Right now, Drake London, the 14.6. So we're talking about the 202, the 203. And listen, I'm a Falcons fan, unfortunately. I am a big fan of Drake London. I am glad he's on our team. But him going at the one-two turn in front of guys like Jonathan Taylor, even Saquon, Brandon Ayuk, is just diabolical work by the fantasy community at this point in the offseason. Okay? We are drafting him as if he's already become the Drake London that we want him to be. Right? The upside here is obvious. Drake London is a very good wide receiver, a very, very solid number one wide receiver. Uh, he's just turning 23 years old, and he'll be going into his third NFL season. Cool. His season high is 905 yards. And, of course, it's easy to say it's because of quarterback play, and you say that because you're right. But to be honest, like the targets that he's gotten, especially last year, were not that bad. If you look at player profiler, you look at 35th in target quality rating, 35th is not super high, but amongst like 100, 120 qualified wide receivers, it's not bad either. 36th in catchable target rate. He was 72nd in route win rate and 87th in win rate versus man. Per Sports Simple Solutions, among wide receivers with 70 or more targets last year, 59 of them, London's on target catch rate. So all the targets that were on target that were catchable is catch rate ranked 30th among 59. His broken tackle plus missed tackles forced per reception, 5.8%, ranked bottom 10 in the league. That's obviously not his game. You're not getting the ball. He's not Debo Samuel. You're not getting the ball in his hands for him to make plays afterwards. But I just, I'm just trying to kind of paint the picture of how we are just projecting this unbelievable jump in production to the point where we're drafting him at the 2 1 or the 2 2. Like if I'm drafting a player here, I want a floor of 12 to 1300 yards with a ceiling of 15 to 1700 yards. There are just a lot of moving parts in Atlanta that mostly on paper look great. They look like positives, but it doesn't always look that way, right? We have a brand new quarterback who is 36 years old coming off of an Achilles tear, one of the most serious injuries that you can get in sports, a brand new coaching staff, a brand new system, an awful defense, which I know everybody loves to paint the picture of how an awful defense is so good for fantasy. A lot of times having an awful defense means that the offense stays, that the opposite offense stays onto the field for a very, 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 very long time. And you have less plays run as an offense. All right. So with Drake London, it feels like drafting him this early is essentially you closing your eyes and just guaranteeing everything just goes perfectly right for Atlanta. Love London as a player, and I hope I'm wrong, but this is it, like you're just betting that you hit three or four coin flips in a row. Like you just guess tails three or four times in a row, and it's tails every single time. That's what it feels like drafting Drake London. And that's the difference between 202, 203, and the 212. Like it's a it's a small difference when you're looking at it from a large scale. But it's it is the difference in fantasy football. So mind bogglingly bad at the two one. I am not taking him above guys like Jonathan Taylor. I'm not taking him above guys like Brandon Ayuk. Like it, it just ain't happening. Next guy up on this list, an another dude that I fucking love and I hate to put him here. But this is what happens with value, man. This is this people love the player so much that they start to like project the love of the player onto what their stats are actually going to be. It's Tank Dell. Right now, he's going off the board 39th overall. So the very beginning of the fourth round, right? You have Nico Collins going 21st overall. You got Stefan Diggs 27th overall. And again, I get it. We love Tank Dell. Loved him coming into last year. But you're, it, it just can't be overstated that we're just adding Stefan Diggs into the mix, all right? And still taking, and even taking Diggs that high is probably crazy. Taking Tank Dell this high is, feels like insane behavior, right? He's coming off of the broken fibula, has way 
way more target competition. They have a running back that they now trust in Joe Mixon to probably handle 250 to 275 carries. Tank Dell is going to give you big games. Tank Dell is going to be a very, very good player for this Houston offense. I just don't really see, with Stephon Diggs added into the mix, them re-signing Dalton Schultz, how he builds statistically on what he did last year. Like, maybe he goes from 700, whatever he had, 700, 800 to 950, 1,000. But that feels like the ceiling, assuming Nico Collins and Stephon Diggs stay healthy. There's just too much going on in Houston for me to want to take the most unproven of the guys this early. And we want to talk about unproven guys. That leads me to number three, and that is Xavier Worthy, the rookie wide receiver out of Kansas City. Right now he's going at the 5-6 turn. We're just we're just doing it again with the Kansas City wide receivers. We're just saying like it's Patrick Mahomes. Someone's got to eat here. And what happens is it never fucking happens unless your name is Tyree Kill. Okay. Uh, now I know Rashi Rice is going to be suspended. That doesn't make me want him anymore. I get it. He was their first round pick. I am not very fond of Xavier Worthy. I thought he should have been like a second or third round pick. He's fast as fuck, boy. But he's 165 pounds. I think his route running is fine. I don't think he's a number one wide receiver at all if they put him in the position to succeed i think he could be kind of cool i'm not using a fifth round pick on xavier worthy though i would rather take hollywood brown who has proved himself to be a good nfl wide receiver who probably actually has some weight on xavier worthy which is probably the only time you could ever say that for hollywood brown maybe put him next to emmanuel forbes you guys see that that picture that came out with emmanuel forbes he was at uh otas i guess at washington and he was taking a like a picture with a fan and everyone assumed that the fan was Emmanuel Forbes because Emmanuel Forbes looked like a child. It was a tough scene. And then people, Antonio Brown actually like quote tweeted it and put like potato sticks as uh, Emmanuel Forbes. It was, it was not great. So I hope Emmanuel Forbes fucking eats this year and makes everybody, oh, I hope he physically eats also, but you know what I'm saying. Anyways, Xavier Worthy, 165 pounds, fast as fuck. I'm not sold on him as a player. I'm not sold on just getting a rookie in there and imagining that he's going to break out immediately. Rashi Rice probably back over the second half of the year anyways, and he will take back over that number one role. So it's like, cool. Does he take a month to get acclimated as a rookie, which was what we saw with Rashi Rice? He didn't get above like 50, 60 percent of the snaps until after their week nine, 10 by last year. So if that's the case with Worthy also, when you already have a veteran like Hollywood Brown there, by that time, Rashi Rice is probably coming back. I just, a fifth round pick is fucking insane to me for Xavier Worthy. Like, didn't we learn this lesson last year with JSN? But I, but I digress, and we'll move on to number four, and that is Ramondre Stevenson, the running back out of New England. He is currently the 77th pick overall, the RB20 at the 704. My big problem with Ramondre, and y'all know I've always liked Ramondre as a player, is Antonio Gibson coming over to New England. I think Gibson is a shit running back. I think he's awful on early downs. I think he's a great third down running back. I think he's a phenomenal pass catching back. I think he's a phenomenal athlete. And that is really where Ramondre Stevenson has made his money, just like volume in the passing game. And if that goes goodbye, which I really think that's going to be Antonio Gibson's role, you're going to have a two down player in Ramondre Stevenson that probably splits goal line work in an offense that scored like 14 points per game last year. Obviously, it's going to be different. You know, the staff and, and Drake May coming in and some of these new receivers, it'll be different. It'll be better for sure. This is just a, an extremely fucking uninspiring pick that there's just no way Ramondre continues to be the workhorse here to the level of like opportunity share that he's had the last two years it's just not going to happen i think gibson is going to be like the ultimate fucking annoyance in fantasy football this year he might have 100 carries on the season even that is a pretty sizable chunk he might have 85 carries on the season i think he'll end up having 40 or 50 targets on the year and that's going to eat in significantly to Ramondre stevenson's fantasy ceiling which is already not great and being capped in this offense. So let's get into the back half of this video. And these guys, for the most part, you know, if you followed me for any amount of years, I have one pretty sizable guiding principle as it as it relates to fantasy football. And it will almost exclusively, if you follow, get you ahead of your league mates objectively. You don't even have you don't have to rely on subjective opinions. You don't have to rely on people shouting out and tweeting out stats that have very little context to them. But it is injury optimism, and it is fading injury optimism. Everyone loves every player right now in the offseason. Every player is going to be 100% by training camp. Everybody, There's never been an injury that's ever affected a player at this point in the offseason. No, it didn't matter if you tore your ACL. It didn't matter if your fucking foot was blown off and nom. Like, it didn't matter, right? Nothing will affect you come week one. You will be out there 100%. Your old self, you're in the best shape of your life. So we're going to talk about all the players with just obliterated knees. 
that you shouldn't be drafting this year. And the first one is a rookie. It's Jonathan Brooks, the running back out of Carolina. He was the first running back drafted in this year's class, second round to Carolina. He is currently the RB24 in underdog drafts. So he's being drafted as a, an RB2, 86th pick overall. So I think you're talking about like the 7-8 turn right there. Brooks is easily my dynasty RB1 in this class. Uh, it's not particularly close. I loved everything about his film. I loved everything about his game. He is smooth as shit. He, is, he could do it all. With that said, he is a rookie who tore his ACL in mid-November. All right? Love him in dynasty because he's 20 years old. If he was 23, I'd have concerns about that ACL, making him not 100% until he's 24, 25. Then the lifespan of running back becomes a problem. He's 20 years old right now. He will be you know, 21, 22 by the time he's fully removed from that ACL. He's going into a committee with Chuba Hubbard, maybe Miles Sanders, you know, earn some work back throughout the summer. Uh, but they will absolutely not rush him back into this committee onto a team that, while we expect them to be improved, better offensive line, some more weapons, we're dead last in the NFL last year in scoring 13.9 points per game. Like my brother in in Christ, if you want if you want shares of Jonathan Brooks at the cost of where his talent actually is, do yourself a favor and join one of one of our dynasty startup leagues. Okay, we're we're organizing them for you guys in our Discord completely free. If you didn't know, we also have a completely separate dynasty fantasy football channel where we're putting out content just on dynasty, uh, which I will link down below. But yeah, if you want Jonathan Brooks, go draft him in dynasty. Do not draft him as the RB twenty four this year and redraft. Like Najee Harris in this draft went after Jonathan Brooks. Like Najee Harris is, is going to have a hundred uh, a thousand yards from scrimmage and probably eight to ten touchdowns. If you told me Jonathan Brooks had a thousand yards from scrimmage and eight to ten touchdowns, that would be mind blowing. There is no chance that, that he gets to that mark. Okay, so uh, Jonathan Brooks right now he needs to be like the RB thirty four, the RB thirty five, the RB thirty six for me to have any sort of confidence that maybe he has that second half of the year breakout. And even that, like you look at the guys coming into the rookie year that we say this about. It was the DeAndre Swift. It was the J.K. Dobbins who do break out over the second half of the year. The Cam Akers is the guys that we want to see explode because they're talented and they had day two draft capital. None of those guys were coming off of torn ACLs coming into their rookie NFL season. He is going to be slowly worked into the backfield, okay? So RB24 is a crazy, crazy price for Jonathan Brooks right now. So is Mike Williams's draft price being picked in the single digit rounds mike williams newly signed with the new york jets over there so he's going to be the wide receiver too uh if he could stay healthy but he is the 908 right now in drafts he is 30 years old he is also coming off an acl tear so there's one thing to be 20 years old coming off an acl tear still love you for your long-term outlook it's another thing to be 30 years old coming off of an acl tear outside of garrett wilson the jets have done really nothing but make bad free agency wide receiver signings and bad wide receiver draft picks over the last five years. And I'm kind of afraid that Mike Williams just falls into that uh, that spot here. Like, I, 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 again, I genuinely cannot believe that he is going in the single digit rounds of fantasy drafts right now. Couldn't be more out of him in this price. I, is he going to be healthy to start the year? Is he going to stay healthy to start the year? Like for me to even start thinking about Mike Williams, uh, he would have to drop into the 11th, the 12th, the 13th round of drafts. Like Tyler Lockett is, is going two picks above him and that might be one of the most uh disgusting things that i've ever seen in a fantasy draft so mike williams like the injury optimism here is so fucking real uh, on him and aaron rod like all of it dude it, it, it's just it's so you're paying for what what mike williams did four years ago on the chargers fuck out of here and to be honest with you as much as i really like jonathan brooks as much as i love Ramondre coming out as much as we love Tank Dell, as much as I'm I'm a Falcons fan and love Drake London, this might be the name that hurts the most on this list. And it is my name, Nick, Nicholas. Do you know where I'm going? Nick Chubb. Nicky Chubb right now is going 112th overall. So he is also, I think, round is that round nine, round ten, the RB thirty four. Here's the deal. Here's the deal with Nick Chubb. I got to hit you with some reality here. I just, I don't think there's a price, not anything within like the first 15 rounds where I'm clicking the draft button on Nick Chubb. Uh, and I want to, I want to keep this short because I think Nick Chubb, I think he deserves that respect, but the, the, the injury to him was absolutely satanic and he is 28 years old. It's time to come to grips with reality here. Uh, he had two surgeries after the knee injury last year. While the knee injury happened early in September, he had surgery number one in September. He didn't have surgery number two until November, okay? Because that needed to heal. The swelling needed to come down before they can get into the actual ACL. It wasn't necessarily an early season injury. It was also a devastating injury that is so hard to come back from, especially at the age of 28 years old. 
I have not. And the most concerning thing here is this. I haven't seen a single report or anything about his recovery or his rehab. By this time, after guys have knee injuries, every single one of them is ahead of schedule, right? They'll be ready by OTAs, and then they're not. But they're warming up on the sidelines, and they're going to be ready by training camp, and then they're not. And then we don't want to use them in preseason because it's a precaution, and they're going to be ready for week one. And you know how the story goes. And they're not back to 100% of themselves until week 10, week 12 of the next season. Kevin Stefanski came out. Really, the last piece of, I think, context whatsoever we have about Nick Chubb's rehab was on May 1st. Kevin Stefanski said, with Nick Chubb, obviously, we'll continue to let him rehab. And when he's ready and the doctors tell me he's ready, he goes. Until then, we like the guys we have. There is just nothing positive for us there. There's nothing like his rehab is going well. There's nothing like we expect him back this year. There's, there's, uh, yeah, just, just absolutely do not be taking Nick Chubb until 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th round of underdog drafts. And if he never gets there, then he never gets there. You should have 0% ownership of, of him. It hurts, but it, it's, it's real. Nick Chubb, the goat, but just not this year. Okay. Talking about ownership shares is one of the cool things about underdog fantasy is like you can buy into drafts. They have best ball mania, which the the first place winner, I think it's like $3 million or some shit this year, $25 buy-in. But they also have drafts of just $3 to enter. And this is how you stay on top of ADP. This is how you stay on top of uh, player value. This is how you stay on top of like the industry and the community all off season long. They have drafts for as little as $3. So if you deposit 10 bucks, use our code, you'll have $20 on the platform to play with. Therefore, you could do six drafts. And of course, doing that, you know, best ball, you don't have to set lineups or anything. Come back at the end of the year. If you got in first, second or third place, you win money. And they show, you know, if you do high volume, high volume of drafts, you do six, you do 12, you do 18 of them, whatever. They show ownership percentage of every player that you drafted, which is a really, really cool perk of the underdog app. All right. So we will link that down below. Again, make sure that you use promo code BDGE when you sign up and deposit $10 and, uh, and they'll double your money. And if you're in the discord, we will be dropping links to draft against us and with us. Okay. So Nick Chubb, no, no. There are guys like Eckler, Chase Brown, Zeke, Tajay Spears, Jerome Ford, teammate, all of whom I would easily draft over Nick Chubb right now. And the last guy up on this list, you know, we've only done running backs. We've only done wide receivers. I want to throw a little shade at some quarterbacks. Fuck it. This is the time of the year to do so. Is Jaden Daniels, the Washington quarterback that just went number two overall in the NFL draft. Problem I have with Jaden Daniels' draft position right now is that he's the fucking quarterback 12. So he is already being drafted as a QB1 in fantasy. I just, I just know we're not doing that. But I know we are because I'm looking at the fucking drafts. I'm looking at the data. He's getting picked in front of Brock Purdy, 4,400 yards last year total, 33 total touchdowns in one of the best offenses and one of the best schemes. He is being drafted above Tua, who led the NFL in passing yards last year, 4,700 total yards, 29 total touchdowns. He's getting picked above Jared Goff, 4,600 total yards, 32 total touchdowns in one of the NFL's best offenses. I like literally cannot believe Cliff Kingsbury got another chance to run an NFL offense. Could not be le less optimistic about somebody being in charge of an NFL offense again. And he's here with Jaden Daniels. I get it. Jaden Daniels is a phenomenal runner, but this is we're reaching here. We are just reaching for pure hypothetical upside. Uh, and I couldn't be more out on, on the price of quarterback 12. Jaden Daniels for me in redraft this year. I have my rankings about done. Yeah, I have, I have Jane Daniels down at like quarterback 21, 22 in my redraft ranking. So this this shit isn't even fucking close. I have him so much further down. And underdog, a lot of people that draft do draft specifically for upside because for best ball, you're not deciding who to start each week. It's just getting the best hypothetical upside each week. So I understand why the ADP is a little bit higher here, but the discrepancy there is massive. And if you missed my video on Wednesday, that was the entire video it was talking about uh, the top 25 running back rankings and who I am higher or lower on against ECR. So expert consensus rankings on fantasy pros. So we'll be doing the same thing with wide receivers next week. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you are new here and if you fuck with dynasty, make sure you subscribe to that channel as well. We'll keep the content up there, but those are my eight mind bogglingly bad draft picks in fantasy drafts right now. Just to recap, we have Drake London at the 14th overall pick tank Dell 39th overall Xavier worthy at the five, six turn. Ramondre Stevenson at the early seventh round, Jonathan Brooks as the RB24, Mike Williams in the ninth round, Nick Chubb in the ninth, tenth round, and Jaden Daniels as a quarterback one. Hate everything about all of that, all right? But I don't hate you. I love you. And because I love you, you're going to go down and hit the button that looks like this. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see y'all 
next week.